This show is brought to you by Pivex Private Instant Verified Transactions. With its groundbreaking zero coin staking and masternodes, Pivex is the top privacy currency. Feel free to trade some on Binance or Bittrex. And for more information, go to www.pivex.org. Hello and welcome to ITK Crypto. Now, this is the first of our weekly news roundups about all the latest news on cryptocurrency. There's always going to be lots to get through. To be honest, we could do a daily one. Now, ITK Crypto is part of Smart Reach, um, and you can find us on Twitter at Smart Reach One, the, uh, the 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 figure one, as opposed to writing it out as O N E. So, ITK Crypto, part of Smart Reach. Okay, so it's going to be me every week, Tom White. And Cryptosi will be here every week, just like he is now. Hello, Cryptosi. Hello, Tommy. How are you doing, mate? Very well, thank you. Looking forward to this. And we're going to have uh, guests on the show as well. But for this first one, it's just uh, me and Cryptosi. Um, and there is so much to discuss. Like I said, there always will be in, in Cryptosi. There, there really is only one place to start. I've got a feeling we might have to start with this every week. And that's the, the current price of of bitcoin because everyone's talking about this at the moment there's been real conflicting reports now the fact is this week bitcoin has dropped to a 420 day low which was before uh, below sorry four thousand dollars okay how did that happen and what's happened since right well how it happened is a mystery to me if i'm absolutely honest and if uh, a lot of the other commentators in the space 95 percent of them were honest it would be uh, uh, their response would be it's a mystery to them as well but what i can say is that it's um it's not something that has not happened before so there are some memes floating around and we should probably link one in the description or or tweet one out but basically the way crypto um bitcoin in particular works is that it has these market cycles so it will boom up to a, a new high which is be which will be a long way past its previous highs and then it will fall down to a low which will generally not be as low as the previous high but it will still be a lot lower than the new high so for example in late 2013 uh, Bitcoin boomed at the time to $1,300 each. And that was considered insane. Oh my gosh, Bitcoin has gone over $1,000. It then crashed down to as low as, I think it went as low as $200. So it's kind of like the cycle keeps on repeating itself, but the numbers <laughs> that Bitcoin's working with are, are ever increasing. So to me, it's not something I haven't seen before but it makes it nonetheless painful. I guess. Well, well, yeah, it's still a heck of a lot higher than, than it was if you, if you got in when you did a few years ago. And just when, when you're talking about um, sort of what experts are saying there, and we should tweet a few, I can actually read some quotes out because I've got, I, I actually can't believe what I was reading yesterday. I went on to um, uh, a very um, a well-respected uh, newspaper there online um section and the headline this was at um 2 47 p.m yesterday okay and this is the headline can we say which newspaper it was uh well we, we can if we want I, 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 I mean we're not we're not well I, well actually you know because it might end up being derogatory because it changed so much in 15 minutes that's that's the point so that's why i'm going to hold back okay okay but the, the, the headline at 2 47 p.m Bitcoin price capitals bombshell. Experts say sell now as Bitcoin to bring pain to investors. And I've got some quotes as well. It says um, from a, a an expert from a business school. He, he's a he's a doctor. He says um, Bitcoin's price is free falling as its bear market deepens. And it says I'm certain there's more pain to be felt. No one knows for certain when the bear market will quit. And the next bull run will begin, if ever. My bet is the latter. Okay, now remember, that was at 247. Right, the same reputable uh, news service, uh, newspaper, online at 3.02 p.m. All right, so 15 minutes later, the headline, same picture and everything, Bitcoin price rising in capitals. How high could Bitcoin rise today? 
why is Bitcoin rising? And it says, Bitcoin has proven to be one of the most unstable cryptocurrencies in recent years, performing at astronomical heights in 2017 before falling flat this year. Despite this, Bitcoin remains one of the most valuable currencies and is still worth thousands compared to sterling. Currently, one Bitcoin is worth a total of £3,123. So I think that is just under $4,000 as we've been talking about. And that price could rise further today alone. And there are more articles which back that one up over the coming hours. So I was watching this yesterday with interest. So can you just describe that a little bit more simply, CryptoC, that we know that the price dropped below $4,000. That was the lowest, like we said, for 420 days, but it has gone back up. So can you put that into context? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's, first of all, it's probably a good thing that we didn't say the newspaper's name because I am about to say something derogatory about them, which it's, it's commonplace here is that they just haven't got a clue. They just don't have much of a clue. So basically, um, it's all about the, the, the volatility and it's all about the amount in which Bitcoin has moved. So what tends to happen, and this happens far too often, is that Bitcoin will move up 80% and then it will move down 20% and people will call the down movement a crash and they won't call it a, a correction. So corrections can happen in both ways. So if Bitcoin, as it did, moved downwards over 25% over the last week or so, it's highly likely and highly like anticipated and expected not only with bitcoin but with all other assets that after moving down by so much it will move up by a, a slightly less amount by quite a sorry not slightly but quite a, a lot less amount which will be what we would call the correction and basically when bitcoin moved down by so much it then moved up a little bit which was itself correcting itself for too much of a sharp downturn and that's basically what happened now for them to then say how high can Bitcoin go, it's not really a question of how high it can go because it wasn't really an upward movement. It was more of a correction. Some people uh, negatively would call it a dead cat bounce if you're expecting it to continue going down. But I would call it more of a correction and more of a, a, a stabilization in the Bitcoin price. So I, it, it just it baffles me that such reputable reputable news sources c can come up with such nonsense so often to be honest well, with you well that that's why we are here because you certainly and the guests that, that we're going to have on ITK crypto and and and, um, and superb guests that we've had on on previous projects that we've been involved in they actually are experts who can explain this a lot better just like you are whereas sometimes you think a lot of people uh, journalists, and, and I'm a journalist myself, are maybe just, they're, they're not in the know and are just speculating as opposed to actually properly looking at the fact. They look at the facts and just see a load of numbers, a load of words and don't know what they mean. Yeah. And it's, it's very difficult. It's very difficult with uh, trying to put a, a uh, trying to put it into news and try to explain Bitcoin's value. It's very difficult because it all depends on what kind of time period you you put your your analysis on. So if we've been an analyzing our, over the last 12 months, Bitcoin has been a terrible store of value. Terrible. It's The price has gone down from, I guess this time a year ago, it would have been at around, probably around 15,000 US dollars. And it's gone down to just over 4000 now that's that's terrible but if you if you draw that out over the last 10 years there's not a single asset class in existence today that could compare to crypto there's not there's nothing that could compare to the returns that you'll see or you have seen over the last 10 year period nothing even comes close and if you stretch it out to the next 10 year period i would say it would be the same nothing would come close but when you start to look at these micro time slots, like a year, a week, or a month, then you're going to get these type of anom anomalies, especially whilst Bitcoin is finding its price. And that's the main thing that people have to get into their like 
into their way of thinking, which is probably why it may, it's, it's kind of like a dangerous thing for us to do weekly rounds up, re- weekly roundups. Because in a week, you, you really can't tell anything about where the technology is heading within a week. You like, it's, it's more anecdotal and more, um, buying buying rumors and selling news it's more about that than it is about the long-term actual value of bitcoin which is what if you are investing in it now which is what you you have to be investing in it for you have to be long on bitcoin otherwise you may as well play the lottery i would say so i suppose that people listening to this who who maybe have got bitcoin and wondering what to do uh what wondering what to do with it or whether to to buy some bitcoin themselves i suppose the message is bitcoin is a long-term gain yeah yeah 100 percent um i always say to people because there there are so many more people now than there were in 2013 stroke 2014 when we had our last bear market although it wasn't really called a bear market then because there wasn't so there was well there wasn't such a financial emphasis on the space at the time it was still like i've said before a lot more libertarians a lot more people who are in it for more than increasing their fiat more than getting lambos i think even the term moon and lambo when lambo i don't think those terms even existed at that point and i always say to them during that time i continued to accumulate bitcoin and continued to accumulate accumulate it all the way down to 250 and slowly as it rose up after the halving which we'll have to i'll have to explain in a another itk episode and it's obvious now how that has worked out that strategy of just continually accumulating regardless of the market cycle it if you're long it will work out if you only want to make money for next month then i i don't know then i guess you (laughs) i really have no no advice for people in that with that kind of strategy so um so yeah but that that is a problem as well and something that i found myself um is that this time last year when there really was i mean the the price was very high um i know people who who got into it and then they got into it they sold high and were delighted about it and i mean what has it really done for them they've made a little bit of money but long term wise it would have been better keeping it where it where it is and that will that will definitely become true one other thing crypto to, to say these people have taken that money out and they seem to see it as free money they don't realize that they have to declare that on their taxes don't they and i've said this to several people they think that that's just free money they have to that, that's one bit of advice that we can give is if you do sell your bitcoin yeah. the tax man has to know about it because he or she will find out well, this is the thing. I think it's difficult. I think the 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 only part about that statement that I would I would disagree with is that he or she will find out. I I think that part. I think that's one of the the real dangers of cryptocurrency, as far as states are concerned, as far as governments are concerned, is that the tax man may well not find out. So it's not worth the risk, though. Crikey, the the, the fine will be a lot that you've made. Exactly. And that's, and that's really, that's really the crux of it. But in the way that tax should always have been, it should always have been a person pays tax, not taxes taken. So whether or not the tax man can see it, effectively, it should make no difference because people should be paying taxes anyway. That's the way taxes work. You pay them, they're not taken from you. And I think that's where crypto kind of, it kind of smooths out the playing field in one sense but then in another sense it kind of adds an added danger because now it's in an individual's hands much more than it's ever been as to what they decide to declare and as to what they decide to pay but personally also another thing sorry before i even go on another thing that needs to be taken into account is that there is no hard and fast rules especially not in the uk about how you pay your crypto taxes like how how are you supposed to pay them is it capital appreciation is it supposed to be declared as a a form of income and depending on how you declare it it will depend on what rate you declare it at so while the tax man may complain that he's not benefiting from crypto we also need a lot better guidance on how we're supposed to be paying the taxes that we 
or for the for the money that we have earned during uh while speculating on crypto so i think it kind of goes both ways and, and the tax man is a little bit he has been dragging his heels with regards to giving us um guidance with regards to crypto tax. Do you, do you think that that maybe the tax authorities just like a heck of a lot of people who claim to be financial experts are thinking well this cryptocurrency thing won't last anyway so i don't need to worry about it um i uh, i don't know i guess in in reality i guess yes would be the answer it's still a very small fish to the tax man it's it may be making a, a handful of people millionaires but i don't think it's generating the type of revenues that it's worth the tax man rewriting the rules for so i guess in a way yeah until the tax man starts to really feel his pockets being lightened by all of these crypto geeks not paying their fair share until that point comes i don't think we will see any kind of guidance from the tax man with regards to crypto and what's happening at the moment or what especially what what i do is that you kind of have to get, guess in advance what the tax man will say and pay him based on that so it's the tax man's in a good position anyway because he's at the end of the day he's got the ultimate say and it would be foolhardy for people to not pay their tax or at least not pay something and then we'll have to argue about how much should be paid at a later date but yeah it's it's definitely an interesting situation which it's going to be good to watch unfold well it's definitely it, there's there's no doubt there's definitely still a gray area i've got one more question on this uh, current bitcoin situation we've got loads more to get through besides this it's just that this is the top story at the moment there are people and and you 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 you've, you've I think if you have sort of answered this, but to go into a little bit more detail, there are a lot of people who will still say, or at least suggest, that this um, Bitcoin price going lower and going below four thousand dollars, despite what's happened in the past, some people will speculate that this is either the beginning of the end of um, of Bitcoin or even the death of Bitcoin. And could you dispel that myth? <laughs> um, oh yeah, well. I, I just like to say, when people do say things like that, I just like to say, okay, well, let's, let's wait and see then, shall we? Because it's, um, there are websites which have got hundreds of articles where people say, and with plenty of good um, reason and sound economic theory, why Bitcoin is now going to die. And subsequently, Bitcoin has gone on to reach new highs and new highs and new highs. I think that's one of the reasons why people who are invested in bitcoin feel so strongly when there is a correction to the upside so like we saw in the last week or so the price went down from roughly five thousand five hundred dollars to below four thousand dollars but then when it came back up from maybe three thousand eight hundred to four thousand two hundred people who were within bitcoin felt um I, I I can't find the word, but they felt kind of like relieved, vindicated is the word. They felt vindicated because providing Bitcoin doesn't die fully, providing Bitcoin doesn't go to zero, there are arguments that say that providing it doesn't go to zero every day or every block, which is, or every week, every month that Bitcoin stays alive, the value of that network increases just from it being alive the value within it increases so when people do see bitcoin has survived another drop or survived another crash and it hasn't gone to real scary lows and at this point a real scary low would be sub one thousand dollars that that would scare me then i would be then i would start to question okay is can this thing really work and it hasn't done that. Well, every time it doesn't do that people feel a real a real sense that the people who say it's dying, it's not dying. It's it's still alive. It's just not worth <laughs> much compared to what it was worth last week. You see, when there is a, a, a so I, I have got one more question on this actually. When when prices go, go down in any sort of, I suppose stocks and shares, when they when they go when when the shares go down, you're faced with the issue of right because the sh the the price is low. 
do I buy now? But then there's the also the thing of, well, it's, it's gone low for a reason. Is it ever going to go back up? So I guess it's quite difficult for anybody to say, um, right, now is, now is the right time to buy Bitcoin or actually steer clear. This podcast has been brought to you by Rhubarb Media. Rhubarb Media are the branding specialists behind successful crypto projects such as PivX, Vendable and Libertaria. The Rhubarb style is both loved and respected the world over. So if you want your project to appeal to techies and everyday users alike, give Rhubarb Media a try. You cannot possibly be disappointed. Link is in the description. Well, yeah, I guess the, the, the one place where Bitcoin differs from traditional stocks. So let's take, for example, Apple. Now, Apple had a, had, a, had a big chunk taken out of its market cap around the same time that crypto did. And the two things both were, were, were as we would say, bleeding. So they were both in the red. Now, the difference is I can go to a shop, I can buy an Apple iPhone, and I can use it. So the fundamentals are there it, it creates something that i that something that is tangible something that i can see touch i can watch adverts about it's it's a lot more tangible than bitcoin which is still and anyone who says otherwise is not being honest it's still an experiment it's still a, a project a, a multi-billion dollar project but it's still a project it's still an experiment it's still uncharted waters Whereas a tech company like Apple, that's not uncharted waters. There have been tech companies before. There will there will definitely be tech companies after. So I think that's the only only place in which the the capitulation is felt differently within Bitcoin as it as it would be felt within the traditional stocks. Right. I mean, we we we, we normally promise that these podcasts are going to be twenty five to thirty minutes. I think we've just spent twenty two minutes on uh, our first topic of four. So we better, uh, we better crack on. But I think uh, the thing is, crypto, see, it, it's going to be very, very rare that the price of Bitcoin isn't our top story because it changes so much and everyone's always asking what it means. Um, but there are plenty of big stories um, re regarding cryptocurrency in the news in this last week or so. Now, overstock, right? First of all, tell us what overstock is because some people won't know. And also, what's happened? Okay, so basically, Overstock is like, um, it's an online retailer. And they started off by selling the Overstock or the surplus items of a company. You could go on there and you could sell your surplus. Or they would buy it from you and then they would sell it on their website. Now, the CEO or the owner of this company or the founder, I'm not quite sure what his title is, He's long since been a a Bitcoin bull, as we would say. Like he's he's been a real backer and a real believer in in the Bitcoin project. So <clears throat> so what he has done now is he has said that he's going to be shutting down on the retail side and not expanding on that side, but instead he will be expanding into cryptocurrency and investing more into crypto related businesses so it's um well on, another thing is which is probably not to us in the uk we don't really interact with overstock we're not really but it, it is a massive company it's one of the biggest online retailers that there are i think it's in the top 10 for sure i'm not sure it may even be in the top five so it's a big deal when a company of this size says that they're going to be moving more into crypto than anything else. Yeah. Okay. So I've got a, I've got the an article up here now, um, and it says overstock surges twenty six percent after the CEO says it will sell retail business by February to focus on crypto. So is that surge of twenty six percent anything to do with the crypto? I mean, what how, what does that mean? Um, I think it, I think it's all to do with crypto. Yeah. So basically, I've. Um, it's the stock market, the 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 legacy stock market, the the old fashioned stocks and shares stock market, giving a dramatic thumbs up to crypto. What they're basically saying is, okay, this guy is moving his business into crypto, 
we don't know what within crypto he's going to be moving it into. We don't know how crypto is going to develop over the next five to 10 years. But we think this is a good move. So good, in fact, that the shares pushed up 26%. I'm not sure how the shares had been performing before that 26% move. Like, had they been flat or had they been moving down or had they been moving up? And I think that is something that needs to be looked at and taken into account as well, because there's no point in us running into every story being Captain Bullish with no due reason to be. But from the outside looking in, from as much as I've looked into it, it does look to me as if it's the the legacy, the old guard, the, the traditional stocks and shares owners, those traditional players saying that they are happy that he is moving his established retail business into crypto which is far from being established so it's 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 a it's a really good sign i think right the thing is he's a visionary and if he's doing this people are going to people are going to trust him with good reason and there there is one more quote um to to, uh, from him the ceo's by the way is um it's patrick byrne isn't it um yes and he says we think we've got cold fusion on the blockchain side, what does that mean? I I do not know. I, I do not have know. no idea. I was hoping. I was hoping <laughs> <you would. laughs> we, we think we think we've got cold fusion on the blockchain. I I have no idea. That's probably something that you you'd have to ask a physician what the the importance of cold fusion is. Well, there's cold fusion, isn't there? In the, the film Wall Street Two, but I. I must admit, when I watched that, I didn't have a clue what it meant either. Okay, <laughs> so that's big, big news on that one from o- Overstock, though. So we'll keep monitoring that, though, although th- this doesn't happen until early next year anyway. So we'll keep an eye out. Uh, now, uh, Venezuela. This is an interesting story, isn't it? Um, Venezuela, in Parliament, they've approved crypto bill to combat financial blockade. What's that? Uh, this is this is a huge this is a huge deal. Um, right, so let's. Uh, I'm 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 aware that we're strapped for time, but this may take a while for me to explain. But so let's no, go back. No, to... that's, that's all right because this this is a big this is a big story, and it um it needs to be explained properly. Otherwise, no one's going to have a <laughs> yeah. have a clue what we're saying. So don't worry about that. So um, let's go back to when I first joined crypto. Um, back in the, the the dark days of sub one thousand dollar bitcoin and um back in those days one of the main one of the main things the main reasons why a person would join bitcoin is because it was to fight against this this idea that there was tyranny being waged using financial instruments using uh, monetary policy now one of these monetary policies that would be used to really cripple a nation worse than physical violence can worse than bombs can and that's the use of sanctions and financial blockades so it was said during the war in iraq that there was a a financial blockade put in place on the iraqi so that there was no money allowed in or allowed out nobody could deal with them and that led to the starving of hundreds and thousands of people now this is not there's i'm not exaggerating this is on this on on record it's on fact so with those types of evils being committed using money that was the reason why a lot of people started to promote bitcoin as if to say these regions of the world which were being cut off by the legacy financial system would be able to survive let's say at least possibly flourish underneath the freedoms that cryptocurrency will give them now fast forward another eight years and we're all very aware of the terrible conditions that people in venezuela are living in under the the uh uh, austerity is not really doesn't really do it justice hyperinflation that they're having to suffer and basically their savings being wiped out month to month now under that type of harsh conditions for them to be suffering with blockades financial blockades as well it just makes the situation worse and what has what has happened now in venezuela is that they've signed a crypto bill so that they can start to work with outside entities and stop making it so easy for 
other nations to um, maybe cross out or deny them their own sovereignty, at least financially. So in a, in, in a nutshell, that's what this bill does. It kind of allows them to, to be more their own boss, a, a, a higher level of autonomy for the Venezuelan people, which is, it's just good in every single sense of the way, a sense of the word. Can it, is this specific to Venezuela? Would this not work in, in certain other countries? Um, it's, I would say, well, this particular bill, yes, is specific to Venezuela because Venezuela don't have the power to write bills for other, other nations. But there are definitely other nations that would benefit from the freedom of crypto. There are plenty of other nations that are currently living under sanctions. Um, places like Iran, I guess, Syria with, off the top of my head. But there will be other nations that are living under sanctions. And those nations would definitely, definitely uh, benefit from using crypto in a more uh, in, a, in a government at a government level so so yeah there it's not it this particular bill is but overall other countries should and could follow their lead okay and and what are you is this anything to do with petro what are your views on petro uh now yeah that's something so that's something a little bit different and this is this is where everything is not always black and white. So my personal views on Petro are are not not good. Um, what what is it? Right. So Petro is it's a a government owned cryptocurrency, which is in its own way a closed cryptocurrency. So it's not like all other cryptocurrencies where anybody can mine it or anybody can join in anybody can be involved it's not like that it still has the the centralized element element of government control and government backing so it's um it's said to be the official cryptocurrency of the venezuelan government so they've put out an ico as other charlatans have done and they've said okay if you if we raise such and such we'll tie the value of our crypto to a barrel of oil, we'll peg it to a barrel of oil and it will be our own sovereign currency is effectively what they've said. But from my point of view, uh, from a technical point of view, it it falls down on a few key on a few key pieces. And the main one is that it's it's far too centralized. So whilst they may mean well, the fact that they're trying to control it at all, or not at all, but to this degree, um, means that for me it's it's no more than a cash grab. And I can't I can't see how it I can't see how it could possibly work out. So I think it may cause more harm than it does good, the the petro. Okay, so a bit bit of skepticism there at the moment. Our our final topic to discuss. Um so a fourth and final topic is is I suppose it's going back to it's going back to tax, but Ohio State out in America, they're apparently receiving Bitcoin for tax. Now, is that have I read that correctly? And if so, how much of a big deal is that? Um, yes, there must be. You there's have... got to be some small print to it if it is true. Well, yeah, there definitely is small print, and the small print is that as soon as they receive the bitcoin they convert it into us dollars so effectively you're paying for bitcoin at the till but by the time it reaches the coffers it will be us dollars um how much of a how much of a big deal is that to i i, I don't think that that doesn't sound like it's any different to just paying in dollars no it's no different except that you're what paying in benefit? bitcoin but, um, the benefit would be i guess if you have problems with US dollar banking regulations or or banking in US dollars in any way, or if you want to pay your taxes with a source of money that's a lot more um, anonymous. So you obviously you would attach it to your name and pay your own taxes, but then the the paper trail of where your money has come from and all of that is that's then your own business. That's that's then you've then got your or you've got a massive amount of your own privacy back so i'd, I'd say, 
I tell you what, crypto. See, I'm listening to that, and I'm thinking, is this going to be used for sneaky husbands and wives who've got some money stashed away they don't want their husband and wife to know about? And yes, and they're gonna they're gonna spend it that way rather yes. than out of the you know joint joint yep. bank account. It doesn't. It it seems to only. Be, I can't see any benefit unless it is quite, you know, quite sneaky. Well, that's the that's what another one of the arguments that is always at crypto. We don't mean that's crypto. not that's in, in no way illegal, by the way. That's the, in, in no way, um, you know, I'm not necessarily saying it's a negative, but it, it it does seem to have been there decided by someone who may have wanted to hide their money from someone for for one reason or another. Yes, yeah, and it goes back to the old the old adage: if you've done nothing wrong, then you've got nothing to hide. But yeah. If that's the case, then why do people have curtains? Like privacy is just is literally it's a it's a human right. Like you you have the right to not tell everybody everything. Do you know what I mean? So with that in mind, some people like even myself. I would prefer if I had the opportunity to pay my tax in the UK with crypto, I would send them crypto a hundred percent because there is no, there is no trail as to where my money has come from because that is none of their business. And I think as that kind of sentiment and that idea um, permeates through society, people will be more inclined to take the stance that, okay, you are an authority. Okay, you are tax collectors, but that does not give you the right to know all of my business. It it just simply doesn't. You're allowed to know what I declare, and if you feel there's room or reason to investigate, there has to be sound reason behind it. And with the current financial system, that's just not the case. It's too easy, and it's too readily available for authorities to infringe on people's privacy. So Ohio taking Bitcoin as a payment is it's a huge it's a huge step towards them saying that we are prepared to take a payment from you that does not infringe on your privacy in any way. And I think that that alone is a massive deal, regardless of whether or not they they hold the crypto afterwards, which which has been the massive the biggest argument towards this story has been, oh well. Ohio won't be holding Bitcoin, but they shouldn't be because holding Bitcoin right now is pure speculation. So they shouldn't be holding. They shouldn't be holding Bitcoin right now. They should hold US dollars, and they should accept Bitcoin. So for me, I think they've got the they've got the balance perfectly correct. Yeah. So uh, there'll be other the the other states, other nations watching this, no doubt, and and just just monitoring it, and and I suppose they could um, introduce it themselves. I mean, me personally, I'm all for it. I mean. My girlfriend came out the other day and said that she bought my Christmas present and then asked me to transfer the money. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> and, I, I, and I even did. <laughs> yeah, well, when the, uh, when the lady in your life speaks, you'd be a fool not to, uh, not to listen. She's got a lot more power than a tax man has, I'll tell you that. Oh, God, we, 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 we've both learned that one to our cost long ago. Right, okay. Cryptosi, uh, great to have you on. And um, we will be back next week because remember, this is ITK Crypto, which is part of SmartReach at SmartReach1 on uh, on Twitter. Um, this will be available. Um, well, as a matter of fact, I don't need to tell you how it'll be available because you'll be listening to it right now. Um, we will be back next week. We might have a guest with us as well with all the latest crypto news. This is what we want. We want, uh, we want to be the best place for all of your crypto news. That is exactly what we plan to be. Thanks, Cryptosi. Thank you so much, Tommy. Looking forward to speaking to you next week, mate. This show is brought to you by Pivex, private instant verified transactions. With its groundbreaking zero coin staking and masternodes, Pivex is the top privacy currency. Feel free to trade some on Binance or Bittrex. And for more information, go to www.pivex.org.